What's up guys, CP Modi here back with another video and a little while back I did a video where we made note and actually started our long term tests on Seagate hard drives as a lot of people do bring up just how unreliable are and I actually wanted to go ahead and test some of the new generation to see whether they're still as unreliable as a lot of people say they are. However with that being said it was also too brought up to me by one of you guys, a viewer, that Seagate's external drives are even worse when it comes to reliability and longevity. Now, seeing that I had a Seagate hard drive in terms of this little guy here, the Seagate expansion drive that I checked out quite some time ago back in June of 2016. I thought, damn, I've got one. It's been running for quite some time. So let's do some tests and see exactly how it's been going. So for the past year and a half almost, this guy's been running just about every single day and it's known as my Raw One drive, which houses video assets, Premiere Pro projects, and basically everything in relation to actually storing uh, content in terms of making videos. So rather than storing raw video, it just stores the raw project files, little bits and bobs, Photoshop files, all that kind of stuff that you'd make when making videos. Whereas all my other raw drives, which you can see in this shot right here, which are quite a lot of them, house the actual raw footage that comes out of this camera right here, whether it be red cameras, this little guy, black magic cameras, or all the other cameras I do own. Everything that comes out goes onto those other raw drives, whereas this Seagate drive actually goes ahead and holds the editing files that I use when editing up these videos. Videos. Now, as I did mention, this guy is used just about every single day as well. I do some sort of video production every single day. So for me, this guy gets a ton of use and has been going for about a year and a half, deployed back in June of 2016. So this guy's really had some work done with it, but let's see exactly how time has passed. Jumping into Crystal Disk Info, we were gone ahead and presented with a runtime of 9,381 hours, or by the time I actually get some screenshots done, a little bit more, but about 9,380 hours of runtime, which is about 4.6 times longer in terms of runtime than what its rated Barracuda drive inside of this guy is actually designed for. Taking a look on the uh, Seagate website, we see that the Barracuda drives are rated for just 2,000 hours, meaning again, it's about 4.6 to 4.7 times more runtime than what the original drive was designed for. We also do get 271 power cycles with good and decent temperatures right here, and even a no errors on this guy. So overall, in terms of a health front, the drive's actually in not too bad shape, and I'm really happy with that. And seeing that it's 4 x its lifespan on a Seagate drive that a lot of people say is super unreliable, again, I'm really impressed with how far it's actually come. But with that being said, let's take a look at some benchmarks, because yeah, it might look nice on paper, but if it's not performing any good, well, it's not really the greatest drive. Jumping to Crystal Disk Mark, we did find that this particular drive was actually rather full. In fact, it's like 98, 97% full, so so I did a crystal disk mark as we can see right here on the drive itself where it definitely was okay in terms of speeds although as you can find out right here in this video the drive has definitely slowed down because I've just completely filled it full of stuff. I grabbed another hard drive, copied all of this stuff off of this drive, rerun all the crystal disk marks and boom the actual results weren't half that bad. If we compare them I think I did crystal disk marks on the original review of this guy but if we do compare them with some original numbers it's actually not too far off. The original set of numbers that came out of the box of this particular drive. Not too shabby. Now I did go ahead and reformat the drive once I copied all the files off it so it was basically as close to a fresh drive as I could get so overall it isn't too bad there. Now in terms of gaming I also do found really decent results. Games are playable with no FPS stutters or dropping thanks to any storage as we do know that storage really doesn't affect FPS too much. Loading menus were just about to be expected thanks to the fact that it is at the end of the day a mechanical hard drive it was running on USB 3.0 however with that being said so overall in terms of games it was also too pretty not half that bad but the thing that really interested me was actually under the hood versus what it says on the box so right here on the top of this guy it says it's got a three year warranty not half that bad however with that being said if you were just to buy the standard Barracuda drive that's found in this guy you only get one year warranty so definitely something's a little bit different here so it does look like the uh, external drives are rated for a little bit longer than their internal counterpart. But at this point, it's sounding really positive. The drive is just about the same as it was on the day out of the box 
what has exactly changed? Well, honestly, exactly not really too much. The drive still spins up just fine and is just about fine. In terms of noise and audibility of this guy, it's the same as just about any Seagate drive. There is a little bit of chattering from time to time, but overall it's nothing too noticeable. And even though I sit about a meter uh, from this particular drive, it's really not noticeable at all. And I've got other drives in my system that are definitely louder. It does, however, have the typical Seagate spin-up sound, which if you've ever used a Seagate drive, I'm sure you are exactly familiar with, but basically sounds like any other Seagate drive spinning up, but once it's spun up, it's pretty much fine and ready to go. I'm really not finding any too many downsides. Even when this guy was sandwiched with all the other drives next to it, it really wasn't that noisy. And even though I have a shelf of, I think, like five or six external drives all in a row, you can barely hear them anyway. So honestly, in terms of audibility out of this guy after all this time, it's really not that bad. And overall, there really isn't exactly anything wrong with this drive. It still performs perfectly just fine. And once we do empty it out, it does well go ahead and blow things away and does do benchmarks not half that bad. Don't get me wrong though, there are definitely a lot of people out there who have had terrible experiences with Seagate expansion drives and external drives in general, and also to internal Seagate drives. But the fact of the matter is, there's also to a ton of people who've also to had a terrible time with WD drives, Toshiba drives, HGST, Samsung, and so on and so forth. So at the end of the day, in terms of having a terrible experience, I'm not really experiencing too many problems with a Seagate drive right here. Benchmarks were all fine, and overall the drive is in pretty decent condition, I do have to say, for 9,000 hours of runtime, and it is still going strong. So all in all, Seagate expansion drives, are they really bad? Honestly, in my personal experience with this particular unit, not exactly really at all. Mine's been able to run over 4.6 times its rated lifespan of 2,000 hours, and it is definitely still in warranty thanks to that three-year guarantee that the box claims it has, even though the internal parts like the drive is only rated for one year if you buy the drive separate. As I did mention, all the tests did come back with flying numbers, and even though there is a little bit of noise, it isn't anything out of the ordinary, and if you've ever used a Seagate drive in general, you do know exactly what I'm talking about with the spin-up noises and the occasional chatter here and there. Even though this drive has been used just about every single day as part of a high-end 4K workflow, I found that there really isn't been any problems right here. The files on this guy were easy to access and the drive span up in a timely manner and also too thanks to that power saving feature, even though the drive may be turned on, it still is able to spin itself down to save some of those precious hours. But we'll keep the drive running, I'll keep using it every single day and we'll come back at 15,000 or 20,000 hours to see what kind of happens with that kind of workload on it. But overall, my experience hasn't been too bad and the new generation of Seagate drives in this isn't actually half that bad. Otherwise guys, let me know down in that comment sections what drives you run if you do run external drives. Also too, if you want to pick up the Seagate expansion drive, I've left some links down in that description box. Thanks all for watching and I'll catch you all in the next one.